So welcome back friends. I have a lot to share with you today. Finally, I got done with the Adventure Band aluminum modular bed. I'll, I'll bet that I have 50 man hours into it. Uh, had a lot of ideas in my head and the, that weren't actually very practical and so it all came down to uh, patches and workarounds, but I, I'm pretty happy the way it turned out. So uh, let's come in, I'll show you all the grisly details. I ran into all sorts of problems that needed solutions with this. One of them, one of the biggest ones, was rattling and squeaking. That is something that I absolutely, positively cannot abide in a vehicle. It's got, it's got to be rattle and squeak free. So I think I've got that worked out here. So here's a, let me bring you up, here's a detail. You can see kind of a side detail of how the panel works. Okay, starting at the bottom. So we have a uh, we have a quarter inch plywood panels that go on here and yes there will be insulation behind here all this is just the rough fitting these interesting little guys here are called is it either i track or l track this is the track that they put on the floor of aircraft so they can move the seats you know when they want to get really cheap on you and cram you in there and take away all your leg room they can simply move this up a couple notches right there so the reason for this track on here is that all my cabinets and everything are going to be mounted to the track that way i can hold them on with four bolts if i don't like the position i can move them i can take them out it's completely modular if you look at these little bolts here they have a flat head on the back kind of like a carriage bolt so those go behind the groove and then those those little wings fit in there and then you tighten it down with a nut and then you can secure anything you want to there's all sorts of accessories for these. There's li little loops and clips for tying down for cargo. It's really a neat system. And the, th the way that it's mounted on here, it's all riv nutted in into the body. So it's absolutely rock solid. I don't have to worry about going in and taking out the panels anymore. Once the panels are upholstered and finished and this L track is on, then I can take, add and subtract my cabinets as I please. Now, after this was that piece of aluminum that we had uh, broke at the machine shop. This comes and bends over. Now, the idea was for these panels, let me show you here. Here's one of the three panels, was to fit over that, right? Can you see that? So it was going to sit on top of that aluminum, and I was going to use some of this vinyl right here to insulate that. Well, it moved all over the place and made a bunch of squeaking and racket. I just couldn't have it, so I had to come up with a solution for that. So here you have the back panel, and you can see that we've got that C channel, and that was to rest on top of that, uh, that uh, broke piece, um, but that didn't work out. So what I ended up doing, and I kind of, you know, this was in my mind. I thought it was a little bit, over, you know, carrying things a little bit too far when I originally di designed it, but when I laid everything out, I did want that to fall right in the middle just in case I had to do something like this. So this is a piece of plastic bathroom stall. I bought, uh, there was a, there's a, like a rebuilding type of place where they, people donate stuff and you can buy, you know, inexpensive used stuff, windows and doors. And someone had demoed a bathroom, commercial bathroom, and all of the bathroom walls were made out of this solid, high density plastic one inch. And I bought it all for just, just a few bucks and I use it for all sorts of things because it makes a great bearing surface. So what I did is I ripped it down on the table saw so it just fits, snaps in there and fits perfectly like that, nice and tight. And then I ripped a little kerf in there exactly the same width as the, the the ledger piece and now that sits on there and is a nice bearing surface and then it, once it bolts down it doesn't squeak at all and it's nice and tight and it's super secure it's super rigid so that just worked out great now something that didn't work out great at all is i i found these awesome spring pins that were on these i found these on amazon and they were uh so here's what they do so they're they got a spring on there, so you pull them out there. So that what I wanted to do is I wanted to weld these guys on here, right? And then to remove the panels, I would simply pull these spring pins and the pin would come out and I could remove the panels. Well, a couple problems with that. First off, I don't possess the, the skills to weld them on there. <laughs> Welding the aluminum, trying to weld, TIG weld that aluminum back in that hole. I'm sure it could be done by someone that knows what they're doing, but I ended up just ruining one and it just, it wasn't working. So I had to come up with a different solution. So what I did is I put a riv nut in here and put a piece, just these knobs. I found these really cool knobs at uh, the Ace Hardware store, just down, back down in town. These are quarter 20 threads. And so to make this work, I had to add another piece to the ledger, which I'll show you now. So here you have the finished products. This probably makes more sense now. So this is the piece of eighth inch 
by two inch, inch and a half, whatever. Angle, angle, aluminum angle I had to put on there. Rib nutted all in there. Oh, I can't tell you the hours of measuring and machining to get all of this perfect, but I, I can probably safely say that this is the most, uh, more hours put into this than probably any van bed in the world, but I, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So here you can see, here's the hole where those, that, that black knob will go up in and secure the frame. All it's got to do is just hold, keep it from coming up and bounce it around as we're driving. And then to keep that from rubbing, I found this really nice industrial grade aluminum was it a vinyl coated uh, some type to trim stuff that, uh, that the panel sits on. So it sits on, sits on the bearing surface here, carries most of the weight, and then just to secure it from moving around, it sits on this vinyl here. Let me show you a close-up of this because it's cool stuff. This stuff is really neat. If you have a, a rough edge or a jagged edge or something that you need finished, this isn't the your Home Depot variety stuff. This is the pro stuff. Do you see? Look inside there. You see it's got actually got aluminum. It's aluminum in there and with an industrial vinyl coating and then it's got little grabber teeth so it won't come off and you buy it to fit the width uh, of your material. So this, most everything I'm using in here is eighth inch aluminum. So to trim something, you simply push it on there like this. You can see you roll it on there. It goes on tight, but it's not difficult to put on. Uh, but it really stays and that way see how you can finish things really nicely there and if you look you can see that detail that that aluminum and, and how that bites on there wraps around there if it's really nice you can get it different thicknesses but i thought that was a good find that was really a perfect solution um, to the squeaking problem that we had now there was a whole nother problem that was making me very sad as well and that problem was a lot of flex there was a lot of flex in that panel as i sat on it did I tell you I got the window in? Got the new window put in uh, for Jack so he could see out. It actually opens. No video on that, but uh, fits really well. Looks like a factory window from the outside and frameless. Okay, so here was the problem. Let's move this panel back. Sorry, you should have done this beforehand. Okay, so I knew... So first off, that they, these beds are commercially available or kind of some kits. There's companies that will put them in for you. Uh, well, they won't put them in. They'll sell you the components and you have to kind of make it fit. But one company that I contacted, this bed was $3,000. So you can see why I took it upon myself to build it, even with all the hours that I have into it. I have a better bed, better product, certainly stronger. I was surprised. I thought it was going to be, mine was going to be, you know, kind of homemade looking compared to the nice factory one. And it just so happened, I was at the hardware store two days ago picking up some stainless bolts. And there was a guy in a van that pulled up next to me. It was a Sprinter van. And I, I, I saw that he was working on it, doing conversion himself. And I asked if I could see inside. We ended up talking and kind of comparing notes for an hour. But he had that bed, uh, that factory one that I had rejected in, in, uh, his van, and I looked at it, and I thought, oh, it was, they used half the material, it was really, really weak, I sat on the edge of it right here, and I felt like if, if I wanted to, I could have just bounced up and down and just cracked it, just broke it in half, I was not at all impressed, so when I came home, uh, I thought about fixing this problem, so what happened was, is I would sit on it here, can you see, right there, I'd sit on it here, and, it, and I'm bouncing, it was very flexy, and yeah, it probably wouldn't break and if it was Mrs. W and I, but you know, we have Jack and he's well, energetic to say the least. And I can just imagine him jumping up on there and folding the whole bed in half. So what I did to solve that problem, only on this panel, because this panel is the one that's, you know, where we'd approach and it's going to take the majority of the abuse, is I bought a piece of two inch aluminum flat bar, quarter inch thick, turned it on edge and riv nudged it in and bolted it to the leading edge of that panel and that solved the whole problem. It did a couple things. Not only did it kind of finish up this whole area and, and hide that, that bearing, the plastic bearing surface I put on there. You can see the detail there. Uh, but it, uh, so it cleaned it all up and you know, I've still got my marks in there. Nothing's done. This is all just rough, roughed in. But it made it very, very strong. I could, well, I could just essentially stand on it here. You know, no problem. You can see very very rigid so that was the solution for that then came the plywood so i had to figure out a way to secure the plywood i ended up going with half inch 
uh, Baltic birch plywood, a nice smooth finish sanded plywood. Now I struggled back and forth with three quarter inch versus half inch, but I'm really concerned about weight. That's why I'm putting everything in aluminum. I'm trying to keep the weight down. I don't want to kill my gas mileage and drive a big wallering beast around like my last van where I didn't pay attention to weight. So I needed a way to secure these panels because I can't just run screws in from the top because I'm having this um, an upholstery shop build you know, build the mattresses. There'll be four individual four inch foam upholstered mattresses in here so that when the panels come out, they come out in three pieces. Or I can have one in or two in. If I was just gonna maybe go, you know, snowmobiling or dirt biking or something by myself, I don't need a full queen. I can remove one panel and have a smaller bed, more room in the living area. So I had to find a way to secure this, uh, this plywood after it was upholstered. I can't run a screw through the top. So now the custom van shops that charge thousands and thousands of dollars to do all these things every time I look at their work I'm always disappointed you can do a lot better work yourself they do not they hide a lot of stuff and what they do is they drill a hole in the aluminum bed then they just run a, 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 a screw up in there well we all know that a screw in a static environment is is fine but in a dynamic environment like a van where it's moving and flexing around how long is it going to take those screws to pull out of that plywood not proper at all. So what they do on high-end upholstery and, and a lot of really nice marine type of applications is they use these T-nuts. Any of you who have been to Ikea have, are probably very familiar with these guys, these T-nuts here. So what I did is I drilled through with these number 10 stainless steel screws and I put about 12 of these T-nuts in per panel and these T-nuts come in and after the upholstery is done I'll line it up and simply draw, put this up in here and screw it and secure it. That way I can remove the panels if I needed to clean them or replace them. Um, and that, I thought that that was a pretty slick way of doing it. All right, that's it. Probably talked your ear off here, so I thought I'd just do a quick update on that. So I'm glad to be nearly done with it. I'll show you when the upholstery is in. That's gonna look really, really nice. And then I guess we'll uh, move on to the cabinetry and get the refrigerator ordered and the furnace and all that stuff. So lots to do, a lot of electrical stuff, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.